So here I will talk about tracheostomy tube. So basically, tracheostomy tube is similar to the endotracheal tube. It's just that the tracheostomy tube is inserted at the anterior wall of the trachea. So you can see that the tracheostomy tube has two limbs. One is a horizontal limb and the other one is a vertical limb that sits within the trachea itself. So in this picture, you can see that this is a single lumen calf tracheostomy tube. So why do we need calf and uncalf tubes? So calf tracheostomy tube is inserted directly following tracheostomy because we need to inflate the calf so that there is no aspiration of blood. So fresh following the surgery, there will be some bleeding and we don't want the blood to go to the lower airway. Secondly, if the patient has chronic aspiration and it's not safe for oral feeding, yeah, so we don't want the secretions from the saliva or anything to go to the lower airway or to go to the trachea so therefore we need to inflate the cuff or in unconscious patients in which they are ventilated so ventilated patients they need a closed circuit no leak is allowed so we need a cuff here so sizing of a tracheostomy tube is similar to sizing with endotracheal tube this is a general formula that we use to size the endotracheal tube in children and also in adults. So if you have to describe this, this is a size 8 millimeter single lumen tracheostomy tube and it is calf tracheostomy tube. It is made out of PVC and it is meant for short term use. So this is another type of tracheostomy tube. This tracheostomy tube has an opening between the horizontal limb and the vertical limb. This opening is called the fenestra. So this is present in patients with long-term tracheostomy tube. So this tracheostomy tube is a long-term tracheostomy tube. It allows a very important physiological function in of phonation. The presence of fenestra allows air from the lungs to to be um, channeled through the fenestra to the subglottis in order to vibrate the vocal fold. In this instance, the patient will have phonation. The material of this tracheostomy tube also it is made of silicone and it is suitable for long-term use. So, long-term tracheostomy tube, as I've talked about earlier, has fenestration. Yeah? So another thing, you can see the size of the tracheostomy tube given here. The sizing is slightly different than the um, uh, short-term tracheostomy tube. This is size 8 FEN. This is size uh, 6 LGI. Yeah? So some long-term tracheostomy tube are non-cuff. Some long-term tracheostomy tube are cuffed. Yeah? So the long-term tracheostomy tube, generally, it has double lumen. We have the outer cannula and the inner cannula. Why we need the inner cannula is because it allows cleaning and removal of crusting or tracheal secretions. So you don't need to discharge the patient on a suction machine. Otherwise, if let's say we don't have the inner cannula, the patient will need to be discharged on a suction machine. This inner cannula is taken out of the outer cannula and it is cleaned based on the amount of secretion that the patient produces. There's a lot of secretion, you may want to clean the inner cannula two to three times a day. If there is less secretion, that you may want to clean the um, inner cannula once a day only. So this is another type of AWA adjunct. This is called a T-tube. This is different than the tracheostomy tube. The tracheostomy tube has one horizontal limb and one vertical limb, but this T-tube has two vertical limbs, one going superior, the other one going inferior. The beauty of this tube is it allows stenting. In patients with stenosis of the subglottis or stenosis of the trachea, we can put the T-tube to stent the airway as well as to provide um, uh, uh, the function of phonation. The presence of this T-tube, it is spigoted all the time. It allows the breathing to be humidified. Therefore, breathing is more natural and it's self-cleansing. You don't need to clean the tube. Yeah? Uh, uh, additionally, the patient can also phonate using this T-tube. So that will be all.